Alright guys, so in this video I'm going to be replacing the DTML pump on my 2009 BMW 335i. Excuse there not really being a real intro for this, but I figure you don't really care on the DIY videos. We gotta keep do this as fast as possible. We've got a hurricane coming in the next couple hours, so gotta knock this out real fast before that gets here. Bring the other cars back down underneath here, under the shelter. So um, Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start doing that. So I already got the jack under the car, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it up. All right, now with the car set up, it's just like the front bumper, so like right around there. On the bottom side, we're gonna have some eight millimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo all the necessary bolts. Okay, so there's like a bolt up in the top that you can't see that's pretty hard to... Alright, so as you can see right here, we have back up in here, there's the pump that we are replacing. But to really get that, I think we have to get this thing out. So this is two 10 millimeters and we obviously have to disconnect these hoses. And I think they're just uh, like the same kind of squeeze on clamp thing that go at the P like the PCV valve. And uh, it's probably going to be more than I can do to unclip this with holding the camera with the other hand. So well, maybe not. And a smaller one from behind it on the other side of this heat shield. You're going to smell a lot of gas, too. There we go. And then this is two 10 millimeters right here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we have some more hoses up top. I'm gonna have to disconnect that actually connects straight to our DTML pump. Got that out of the way. And then we have what's the power supply, I suppose. We have our assembly off, and now we can go ahead and replace it with our new Bosch OEM one. It's either a T15 or a T20. So we're going to try T15 first. That will do it. Just a quick visual inspection of this doesn't uh, reveal anything to be broken with it. Of course, that doesn't really mean anything. Anyway, let's go put this new one in. Let's attach it up and see if this solves the problem, so. Also, it appears you have to reuse this. My part did not come with this part, so it's still soft and, you know, not, not broken or anything, so I think it'll be fine. But uh, this does not come with this, and this is the Bosch OEM unit, so it didn't come with it. So anyway, we'll put it on it. Now that it's all attached and back in one piece, the only thing is to undo what we just did and put it all back together. Okay, now it's all back in place and everything is good, so now we just gotta put this panel back in and then uh, we'll go into the car and clear the codes and hopefully the check engine light will go away or service engine soon or whatever it is on these cars.
One thing I realized is that I didn't need to remove all of these bolts here. In fact, only the inner ones have any bearing on this panel here. The rest of them actually just hold the bumper to the car. There are several ways that you can do this. So we're gonna go to MHD. We're gonna go ahead and no, we don't need to, it. see I have it set up to auto data log or go straight to data logging, not auto log, but go straight, go automatically to manual logging. Read DME codes. All right, so we have the fuel pump plausibility, which just seems to never go away. Even though my fuel pressure readings are always good and it's just a shadow code inactive. Uh, so I'm not concerned about it. All the uh, posts online, like on the forums, say don't worry about it. But we also have uh, DME DTML system fault to be 3 d which has been there. So we're going to go ahead and clear DME codes. And now no active codes. So now all we have to do is see if this code comes back. It's fixed. We're going to go ahead and end the video. So if you like this video, please leave it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new.